Welcome to the fitness files. Can you read that? It says SARMS. That's what we're doing today. Oh, you don't even know who we are, do you? No. <laughs> this is a giant board that says what we're doing, which you can't see because we use blue. But Unfortunately. I'm Ryan. Dude, take a seat. <laughs> <laughs> you disrespect. Oh, wait, my water. <laughs> Welcome to the fitness files. I'm Ryan. I'm Michael. And basically, what we're doing today, this is our first podcast, our first video as well. We are talking about... SARMS. SARMS, which stands for... Selective Androgen Receptor Modulators. Really? I thought it said suck a rotten monkey's... <laughs> <laughs> suck a rotten monkey scrotum. That's what it stands for. So... The first of many of these videos, we're just going to share our views on SARMs. We're going to give you a little bit of information about them that you may not know. And we're going to just answer one over bigger, broader question about SARMs. That question for this video is going to be, should SARMs be looked at the same way as anabolic steroids are looked at? All right, I guess you could say that with any drug. Well, let's start with explaining what but. our favorite SARMs are. Suck a rotten monkey scrotum. <laughs> what are favorite? So, what, what are SARMs? And Michael will go into depth what the SARMs are. All right. So basically, these SARMs are regarded due to their effects on the body. So what they do is they give your body a more anabolic environment, but it's not the same effect that anabolic steroids have, right? So they're less symptomatic. So you don't end up with gyno, you don't end up with side effects. That's the proposed idea, even though these SARMs have been out since late 1990s, they're highly experimental, there's not much research done on them, and there's so many private companies that you can buy them from that will give you fake SARMs, and these are the ones that contain pro, pro hormones like estrogen and all that stuff you don't want, because the the whole point of the product is to give you a more anabolic environment in your body without all the harmful effects yeah, of the so steroid. Yeah, so like if you get a fake SARM, you might develop some uh, gyno, which is uh, female breast tissue development within a male, and that's evidence that you have a fake SARM that's and that you just like wasted your money. The big guys on Instagram that their breasts are sagging down. To yeah, the belly and button. it might even get to the point where they lactate. You have like gonorrhea, or you have like guys that have that giant bubble gut, and yeah. but that's not necessarily what most of the SARMs are as potent enough to do. Um, yeah. Really, the SARMs we wanted to talk about, we just wanted to talk about. Does it is it a good idea to look into SARMs? And we're not gonna be. You're looking pretty big in that sweater, yeah, huh? It's good. Um, we're not ripping SARMs, we should say, to start. We're not ripping SARMs. We're not saying that they are a bad thing, necessarily. We don't want to deter anyone from taking it. They do. We just want to provide information about what we've found with them, what we have researched, and all that that we already know. So, our most popular SARMs that we have, you have uh, Carterine, you have Andarine, Osterine, these are the more bigger ones that obviously they have different stages of what the SARMs do. As you get higher on that scale, you get closer to that full anabolic effect you'd get from your mostly known steroids. As you get lower, you start to reach a point where the SARMs may not even work. Like Mike said before, they, there are many studies that show that SARMs don't actually do anything, that the lower down SARMs don't do anything. Um, now, why we would advise staying away from SARMs? A few reasons. First of all, the biggest debate about SARMs is that they are a safe steroid. Uh, there's no negative effect to them. That's not true because anything that, first of all, anything that is sold so discreetly as SARMs are, and there's such public knowledge that there isn't about SARMs, you can pretty much imagine that they're not 100% good for you just off of that. And that's a very broad view of yeah. selling them. Um, as of last year, all the natural organizations for bodybuilding banned SARMs the same way that you have bans on all your anabolic steroids. So if you've taken SARMs within seven years of that show, you cannot compete in that show. That would usually mean that they're not natural. Yeah. 
Besides the NPC, of course. The NPC does not care. They want you to take it. They probably sell it. Uh, now, people also saying that they're natural when they're on, on SARMs. Um, well, I mean, we've already seen this with Ryan Casey. And who knows who else is going to come out. All those Jim Shot kids. Yeah, the Jersey Juice Gang. and You never know. So... Yeah, um, the way that I look at it, you have, like, this is your natural, this is your steroids, to the point where you can't even uh, try to fake being natural. Your storms are, like, right in the middle. You know, you're not natural. <laughs> you're, not on, you're not on steroids, so you're not natural. You can't claim either, but you're, once you take that step, you're far from claiming natural. You're closer to claiming juice gang yeah. um now tell me about the fact that a lot of people think the safe part about SARMs is that they have no effect on testosterone okay so like i said before if you buy one of these fake SARMs, um you have no clue what you're buying really this is it this isn't the case unless you've been experimenting with this type of stuff um and the research is just really starting to pick up now yeah, it's, you know, there's whole reddits where people will post their blood panels and they'll just compare what their SARMs had done for each other. Uh, and this that's an experiment in itself, and I guess it's good for that community. But the, the majority of people taking SARMs, it's almost like it's the young, entry drug. Yeah, it's you not know, like it's, young guys. It's elementary. So, it's kind of like how you would see lower narcotics go into higher ones. It's the same thing. I'm not saying that, like, any anabolics are on the same level as narcotics. It's not what we're saying at all. But it's just a similar comparison. Yeah, in two principle. things to touch on with that. Uh, obviously, the target market for SARMs right now is the, I'd say, like, the 18 to 24 age group. Yeah. The younger guys who... Yeah. Uh, they don't need to take no, SARMs. No. You don't need to. Uh, I find one exception when it comes to taking anabolic steroids. You can't tell me that the guys who compete at the highest level in bodybuilding um, can do that without taking steroids. Yeah. If you have exhaust, exhausted all your options and the guys you're competing against, like if me and Mike were to go on stage, he would need to take something. Um, if the guys you're competing against are taking and you have tried everything, to beat this guy and you can't beat him because maybe your 5% increase in workload you tried to put in is equal to the supplementation he's taking so yeah. you would have to increase so drastically beyond comprehension to match this guy you've reached the point where it's time to make that jump onto something if you're just a regular fitness athlete or even if you're a bodybuilder even if you're doing your entry level shows in the NPC or you're on Instagram or whatever when you're in that six-year gap we mentioned before, even bigger, maybe even up to like 35. Yeah, yeah. A little bit, maybe more than that, like 18 to 35, you are in the prime of your testosterone producing naturally in your body. Um, you don't need to add to that unless you're, you need to be a muscle monster and you need to compete against the best physiques in the world. Otherwise than that, you're kind of screwing yourself for the long term. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Larry Wheels started taking when he was 17, but these were anabolic steroids. But he was introduced to them, and at that time, he was already, com like, he was at 17, yeah, he, was like the he was already competing with guys who were top elite level powerlifters. There is a, that is a justification you know, to it's, take. It's a completely different story. Most, most of us are just people living daily lives who just get involved in this type of lifestyle. Because it just helps us out in one way or another. We enjoy it, whatever the case may be. Um, there's nothing wrong with going down that path, but it's it takes it takes a lot of discipline, and you need to be mature and responsible enough to decide for yourself that you're actually going to do that. Because it's it's an investment, let alone you're putting a foreign object in your body. So who the hell knows if your body's going to reject it or... What it's actually yeah. in it. Uh, yeah. 2017, a study, 45% of the SARMs they studied found growth hormone in it. 
growth hormone obviously being one of the next level anabolic substances you can take is just growth is what it's called um that's not something you would expect to find in an entry level anabolic drug um and then 59 percent of that same study the stuff that was on the label that you'd find on the back was different than a chemical analysis that they did of the substance so almost 60 percent of the study they did they lied about what is on it that that's like you go to uh, like get yeah, ice cream or something, and the ice cream says it's got like 400 grams of protein, but no calories. Like, yeah. come on! Like the water that Mike's drinking is just stacked with protein right now. It's actually something I can't tell anyone, but it's our liquid version. No, no, it's not bad. <laughs> what is it? I don't know. Well, semen. <laughs> No. We went in the steam room today, and apparently the steam room affects your 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 semen. Your semen. You, you're gonna tell me that you go into a 200 degree freaking room, and your semen isn't crying for dear life? My wife is so displeased. So is my son, because he doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> now another thing to talk about with the SARMS, your saggy freaking monkey sack. Um. They're extremely expensive to take as well. Yeah. Uh, what did what did we read before? It was an article about storms, and it was like, you're spending a small fortune a month on supplements. Yes, yes. You, you should never... Look, if you're going to spend a small fortune on anything in the gym, it's got to be your food. Uh, Mike preps weekly, so he's got to buy food every week. I do it more um, spread sporadically. out. Sporadically. Yeah, sporadically. So... That would be the only thing that you should ever be spending that amount of money on in the gym. These songs are like like 150 bucks. A. It's consuming people. People just see this as like an easy way out, you know? Or to even give them the upper hand. But dude, you're freaking 17. 18, 19. Your testosterone is at its peak and you're developing. You're developing as a living organism. Why would you take SARMs? Exactly. Get, get the discipline and educate yourself, and then make that choice. Once you have about, I would say, at least 10 years under your belt. That, that, that's a lot. Someone starts at 17, they start taking at 27. Yeah, I guess, yeah. Yeah, you exhaust all your options before you decide to do that. Yeah. And then, if you, um, if you plan on continuing your fitness career for your entire life, like... Well, not maybe your entire life, but well into your later years, past retirement, like a lot of people do. Um, then that would be a good time to take this stuff that boosts your testosterone is when your body starts to decrease the testosterone it can produce by itself. Yeah, once life starts to take its toll, then you could You would take wish that recourse. you didn't. Yeah. That you didn't take it 20 years ago when you were... You didn't have to do that much to be in good shape. You obviously had to work hard to build muscle, but you didn't. Your your body is just a machine when you're young. If you stay in good shape, your body can do a lot more than people are credited with. So you didn't need to take that. And then when you're 50 yeah. and you're sagging sacks to the floor, you would have wished that you didn't. Even even when you get older, they have TRT, which is testosterone replacement therapy, and um, you, you can do that too. You know, there's a lot of different options when you get older, but um, most people think they need extreme supplementation to that extent where they have to take PEDs to get to an elite level. I really don't think you should discredit, you know, what someone's work ethic could do for them. You know, if you're extremely disciplined, you're educated enough to the point where you could take your own actions and you're actually succeeding with them, regardless of if you're on PEDs or not, um, I think it could take you pretty far. It's pretty impressive what some of these natural athletes are doing now. And they're much healthier too. Yeah. Than taking that stuff. It's kind of like he, like Mike said. It's kind of a little lazy to do that to just jump on the first thing. It sounds like such an amazing thing at first. If you were just to hear about SARMs, the first time I heard about SARMs, I contemplated going on just because that very uneducated, broad explanation that people will give you about them. Oh, we have this new drug. It doesn't affect you the way. Steroids will, but it's going to help you, give you the same effect as steroids. Yeah. Just to look at that, doesn't steroids are negative because they mess with your body's internal procedures, what your body naturally does. 
but now you have something so that automatically equates to building more muscle though it's a negative and a positive like anything there's a negative side and a positive side you can't have two things that are positive it's not it's not a thing like there's nothing like that when it comes to building the fitness lifestyle if you're going to diet you can't eat certain stuff no. your positive is that you're going to look good your negative is that you can't go out to eat with your friends no um you're a loser. yeah yeah you freaking loser but so there's no way that those two things could equal. You got to look into this. You have to see what is actually happening there. Um, there's another point I wanted to make. It's freaking slipping my mind right now. Hello? It's the um, audience. They yeah, want to hear it. Talk to them for a second while I think. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> so basically... I have no clue what I was going to say. I can't remember what I was saying. What I was going to say before. No, we're, we're going to get it. Man. What are we talking about? S selective monkey. Selective monkey talk. Uh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Forget what, what I was going to say. I had something. No, we, we're... This is just temporary. I forgot. I forgot what... About, uh, uh, <laughs> fast forward if you want to see this. <laughs> um... Sarms, Sarms, Sarms. I forgot where I was going. Oh, I, was on like, I was on the highway and then I took an exit after to get back on. Freaking exit on the plateau zone. It was like an exit. You're destroying the podcast. I was on exit 3 and I had to get off at exit 6. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, uh, man. Um, damn. Uh, All right. We'll probably just edit this out. No, we're... We can keep it. We can keep it? Yeah, a little bit. Ah! Think! Think! Welcome to the fitness vials. <laughs> Alright! This is Marvis is fine. And, uh, <laughs> Why don't we just talk about our training history if we're introducing ourselves? Oh, that was something like what I was going to say. Yeah, you do that. You talk about your... Uh, Alright, so... Are you snatching? That was what? <laughs> All right, so uh, I guess I started. How old are you in the fifth grade? Oh my goodness! <laughs> Nine, five. No, dude, the fifth grade. You're five in kindergarten. I started kindergarten Nine. when I was three. You did? Yeah. But you're the same age as me. Yeah, my birthday's in October, so I turned four like a month after. Um. All right, so I was. I don't know. I was, I was an active kid. I liked riding my bike a lot. But, like, by the time I was 13, I actually started picking up actual, like, training. I was doing Taekwondo at the time. And every day I would go home from school, I would just do calisthenics. So that's pretty much how I got started. Because I was always obsessed with, like, being able to move really well. But I also wanted a sick physique as well. So... I oh, I remember! Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you wanted to move. Good. You have run a lap. <laughs> <laughs> These things are addictive. That's what it was. It was addiction. They're freaking drugs, you monkey. All right. So, uh, yeah, what was he talking about? <laughs> um. So basically, uh. So. <laughs> okay, you want to continue or we go? I'll finish. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, so I started tricking when I was like 14, 15. And then I picked up Olympic weightlifting by the time I was 15. And I was still doing calisthenics at the time. Bodybuilding for two weeks now. <laughs> Once a week. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I actually now. did like bodybuilding for a good year from 2016 to 2017. So you got them freaking lats, bro. Yeah. Freaking lats. Um, freaking lats. So yeah, I've been training since I was 13 pretty much. And I just mix between calisthenics, tricking, Olympic weightlifting, and... A little bodybuilding sprinkled in. Yeah. Like a little... Just to get the physique going on. But one thing is, you could definitely build muscle by body weight. Don't, don't knock that... This could be a whole other video, you know. Don't right? knock that. We're just introducing our training history. Oh, are That's we? That's it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I started working out like three days ago. Uh, <laughs> I don't even have a gym membership. <laughs> I have like three dumbbells and these nunchucks. Um, they don't really that heavy though, so it doesn't really help me too much. Uh, I'm gonna finish with these arms first, and I'll go over what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, so just the, the point I wanted to make like 20 minutes ago with these freaking arms. The same way with any other drug, really. You start with the intra, to the, which is the basic level of this drug. But the results that you get from it and the um, the feeling of the drug itself are is addictive. They're addictive, just like cigarettes. You can't. People say you can't just smoke one cigarette. Once you start, it's so hard to stop. Um, yeah. So I would definitely be wary about that. That's one of the things that kind of scares me about the SARMs. Um, Mike doesn't take any pre-workout or anything. Pre-workout probably being one of the most popular supplements that there is now. Yeah, I, I just... No, and that's the way to do it. I had, when I started taking pre-workout a year and a half ago, not, I'm not ripping pre-workout, I love my pre-workout. Uh, but when I started taking it a year and a half ago, I said that I would just take it this once, just to really kill this workout, and then that would be it. And I took it just once that week, and then the same Sunday, a week after, I took it again... And then you have like a long day of work on Wednesday or whatever, and you're like, you know what, I can use another scoop. Two days a week becomes three days a week, and now I work out twice a day, I take it twice a day. This is a year and a half later. So that's a very basic example of the broader picture. You start taking the SARMs, and you're just saying, I'll just take these, I'll just run a cycle. First of all, one cycle doesn't do anything. You have to take two cycles. So you have to, you take the first two cycles, that one becomes two, and then you go through like a year, or not even a year, six months on this SARM, your body got used to it. You plateaued. Do I go back? You go back. Try to go back to being natural now or whatever. Increasing the dosage, you waste more money. You go back to being natural. You, use the, you lose the progress because you're not willing to work harder. You have to up it and you keep on upping it and upping it. And then by the time you're 22, you're freaking injecting test into your ear and you're 150 pounds of muscle. That actually sounds pretty good. Yeah, I don't know why I said that. You're just a fat piece of garbage at that point. That's it. But uh, yeah, just they're, they're addictive. That, that's just the point I wanted to make. That was at like 12 minutes that I had that in my mind. And then, um, yeah, I don't know what happened after that. <laughs> yeah, it's really late right now. <laughs> what is it, like 2 o'clock in the morning? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, yeah, so my introduction. Hello there. My name is Ryan. <laughs> Slice Fitness, Woo! as they call me uh, nowadays. I don't know why, uh, but... Hey, you Slice. Um, I started training three three years, two months ago, so 38 months. In bodybuilding. So straight training, bodybuilding from the straight start. Straight bodybuilding. Um, there's been like a little bit of powerlifting sprinkled in. Just, I started benching heavy. I skipped legs for a year and a half. I skipped squats for two years, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm the guy you want to listen to. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, just the deadlifting portion of powerlifting. I've always kind of periodized my deadlifts. I've liked to deadlift a lot. We did deadlifts the other day. That'll be the video that goes up after this. Batman versus Rocky. This is a YouTube video, so there's not going to be a link right here because it's going to come up after this. Um, yeah, but just bodybuilding, working out a stupid amount of times in a day uh yeah yeah I'm, I'm sure we'll get further into that um, in another video yeah another video because yeah we'll throw in some clips and whatnot we're pretty much <laughs> getting to the end of this freaking night so it's been a long day what did we start at eight seven this morning yeah <laughs> so i just want to conclude the whole series. <laughs> so just do your research um, if you're first starting out with working out, I wouldn't even contemplate it. Just get in the routine of things. Get a solid routine going. Um, learn the basics. That's pretty much it. Yeah, then once again, we're not uh, necessarily ripping them. But we are ripping, definitely insulting on a large level with no holds barred, no remorse, just tearing down like a freaking building on fire. Uh, taking these things without doing your research first, being uninformed, if you do that, you've made a big mistake. And also, don't be taking SARMs and claim that you're natural, because that's an insult to us as well. 
Yeah, we work freaking hard at it, bro. We freaking grind away at this uh, natural lifestyle, and you want to take your freaking songs and just call yourself a freaking. Um. Right, anything else? Don't break my nunchucks. No, I don't want to break them. They're pretty nice. Um. Yeah, just be disciplined about it. Uh, if you're you're just getting into it, this may seem a little bit foreign to you, this whole SARM debate, but you'll definitely hear about it as you further in your fitness career. It is always it should always be your number one option to work hard naturally, and it's exemplary for the other aspects of your life. The, yeah. When you get into business and school and actual learning, things that are symbolic of fitness the, on the level of working hard to progress yourself. There's not going to be that song that you can take. There's not going to be the steroid you can take. Um, you want to build up that character through your strife and through having to work hard. So, yeah, that's a really good point. A lot of people nowadays can learn that. Yeah. There's not many people of okay. that characteristic. I'm talking to you. And you. So, um, Mike is going to stop the video. All right. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe. You gotta tune in next week because we're gonna be posting these things every week. You can head to thefitnessfiles.org. We have plenty of articles, uh, workouts, a lot of nutrition info. So if you are a beginner, don't be afraid to go to our website and make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel just so you can keep getting uh, really good information because we're all about no BS because we put a whole bunch of work into this type of stuff ourselves and we don't want to have anyone be misinformed or uneducated. Any last words? Ryan and Mike, signing out. We'll be back next week because our oh. video's already freaking recorded. We're freaking ahead of the game, bro. Ahead of the freaking game. Ah. Ah. <laughs>